Today I want to take a look at another interesting product from 3D Maker Pro. The creators behind many awesome 3D gadgets and 3D Maker Pro has been crashing it lately with all their 3D scanning lineups, some of which we've already reviewed on this channel from the moose to the lynx and the whale, and each iteration would offer new functionality and enhanced results expanding the use cases of these devices even more. And today we're gonna see the upcoming Eagle LiDAR scanner, and let me the first to say it looks kinda goofy, but function-wise this thing could blow the competition out of the water. Literally. I mean, just look at the size of this thing. It is equipped with multiple fish eye wide cameras and a built in battery, which makes it perfect for so many use cases and applications, such as but not limited to reverse engineering, digital twining, XR, AR, high precision mapping, 3D printing, of course, and anything that requires capturing real world measurements as you do with any 3D scanner. But the difference with Eagle is its range. This thing can capture details up to 70 meters away, which is more than 200 feet. Yup, you heard that right. This means you can scan massive environments, a whole house, and even complete city blocks, as you can see from this demo. I don't think I have seen a consumer-grade scanner with this kind of range, to be honest. It is important to note that there are two versions of the Eagle scanner. The one I have right here is the Eagle Max. There is however another version called the Eagle Standard, which has only one front-facing 48 megapixel camera and one LiDAR scanner. But since I don't have it, I will proceed with the Max since it is the one I got right here. The scanner comes in this unique looking plastic case with film cutouts of all the components. In this case, you will find the scanner itself, a handle, a data cable, charging heads or adapters, a micro SD card, a USB thumb drive, and a Type-C to USB adapter. The first thing is to start by installing the SD card. If you flip the scanner, you will find the SD card slot under the silicon cover. Next, install the handle. Squeeze the handle from both sides to free this base mount, screw it to the scanner and push the handle into place. And don't forget to remove the radar protective cover. Now that I'm holding the scanner, it does look like one of those old movies fake space guns. And here's the thing. The scanner is equipped with four 48 megapixel fisheye cameras from the front, top, left and right. And these support 8K panoramic photo output and allow it to capture ultra wide images which is great. The position of these cameras and how they are laid out help produce blind spots. It also minimizes distortion to a certain extent, improving image stitching for more accurate results. The next step you will do is fire up this thing, point it to whatever you want to scan and follow the real-time preview on the screen. Oh, did I forget to mention that the scanner comes equipped with this massive 3.5 inch screen? Well, massive might be a stretch, but for a handheld scanner, it is nice to have something that helps you to keep track of whatever you are trying to, well, scan. Generally speaking, the touch screen and the software are really easy to use. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail and talk about every bell and whistle, but I wanna point out that you can see a real-time preview when scanning either a point cloud or a camera view or even both where you split the screen between the point cloud and the RGB camera preview so you know exactly what you are scanning. And in my opinion, the point cloud preview is more helpful because you can see exactly what you are capturing. Now let me give you some stats. Since the range of the scanner is 80 meters plus, which is around 250 feet, some of you rightfully so might question the quality and the ability of the scanner to acquire finer details. Well, the accuracy of the scanner will depend, of course, on how far something is. When you are, for example, 10 meters away from the subject or 30 feet, for example, you can expect to capture details that are small, around 2 cm, 3 cm at 20 and 5 at 40. I hope you get the gist of it. From this, you can tell that while it might work for smaller objects, it is aimed at bigger stuff. The battery is another important thing for something portable. The scanner boasts a 12,000 mAh battery with more than 16 minutes of runtime, which for something like this, I think is more than enough, considering this thing can capture a whole apartment building in one pass. 
The scanner is also equipped with this big LiDAR blob at the front, probably the first feature you're gonna notice. The gist of it is that it is an ultra-wide 360-degree FOV that basically shoots laser, which reminds me a lot of those 360 action cameras. The scanner itself weighs 1.5 kilograms, which is a bit over 3 pounds, and measures about 180 millimeters, that is in width, and 100 millimeters in length. And it supports Wi-Fi 5 and has a point cloud frequency of 200,000 points per second which is outstanding for a scanner of this size. No wonder then that this thing can pick up stuff really fast. Now enough with stats, and let's see how we can use this thing to scan some stuff, because no matter how good the numbers are and how good the stat sounds, can this thing actually achieve what it says on the box? To start, click the power button. The first time you start a device, it will start initializing and synchronizing information such as GPS data and time if it is available that is. And don't worry about that, just wait for it to do its thing for a few seconds. So we will hit the big scan button. Move around and capture as much as you want and let the real-time preview on the screen guide you through which areas you have already scanned and which you need to capture more of. And it is recommended not to exceed 5 minutes when scanning. After the scan is done, you can export the data through the USB Type-C port labeled Data. You can then import this data into Ray Studio and process it by importing the point cloud and the image data into Ray Studio. One of Eagle's selling points is the powerful built-in software called Ray Studio, which supports various data outputs such as 3D color point cloud, Gaussian splatting, colored polygonal models, panoramic tour data, and 3D vector models with scale. And by the way, you can read about this directly from the documentation. I think the most interesting thing in the list of data outputs is Gaussian splatting, just because it looks so good and it is a hot topic right now. However, sadly, it is not supported yet out of the box, so you might want to use different software for that once you export the point cloud data. However, 3D Maker Pro assured us it will be shipped in the software within the next few weeks. So to summarize, the Eagle is a great device to capture and scan stuff on the bigger side of things. It is portable and wonderful. The supporting software is easy to use, and for the short period we've been able to use it, it's been a smooth experience. The Eagle scanner is set to launch today, with a starting price of $17.99 for super early birds, for 48% off of the Eagle Standard Edition, and $22.99 for Eagle Max. And here's the pricing page where you can check it all. Basically, if you grab this early, you can take advantage of big discounts. This is specifically for people who need to scan big stuff fast, like architects, archivists, artists, and even 3D artists in general. And to be honest, you never know when you need to scan an environment and add it to your projects. Here's the thing. It comes with a stinging price tag, but I hope this video gave you an idea of what this device can offer. So if you are interested, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.